on this holy name of Jesus. You know that St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, he says that God is infinite and he is so infinitely wonderful he wanted to make a world but he could not make the world with anything that was infinitely wonderful so therefore he made an infinite number of wonderful things so that each part of this entire universe in which we are shows forth a different part of the beauty that is God the rock is very hard and it shows the firmness of God. The flower shows the great beauty and delicacy of God. The lion shows his great strength and the dove his innocence. And every single part of this world shows something different of the beauty of God. But this is also true of the saints. Because God does not only have natural beauty that is shown in the world around us, but he has a great magnificence in his divine heart. It cannot be expressed in only one heart, such as the heart of David. And therefore, Jesus Christ made many saints, so many saints, each of them showing a different part of the beauty that is God. And now we know that when he was born, and he was eight days old, he was given the name Jesus. Jesus means Savior. What's a Savior? What is a Savior? Savior, we know when we think of the Savior, we think of one who died on the cross for our sins, and he shed his blood for us. He took his sin, our sins upon him. But the Savior is so much more than that. And he also was like the good shepherd. He went to the very edge of the world to pick up a little lost sheep and put him upon his own shoulders and bring him back. But in fact, there are many, many signs of Jesus in the Old Testament. St. Jerome, he is the great saint who translated the Bible from Hebrew into Latin. And he gave us the proper Bible that we have today. And St. Jerome says that in every page of the Holy Bible, in every page of the Holy Scripture, we find Jesus. In the first sermon today, we consider the great heart of Moses. Moses, who is a type of Jesus. Moses was drawn out of water. And our Lord Jesus Christ will make us become like him by being baptized in water. And through water, Moses killed all the enemies of God. And so likewise, through water, Jesus Christ at baptism wipes away all sins. And Moses had a great heart of a warrior. By himself, Moses stood up against the entire Egyptian army on the day that they crossed the Red Sea. Moses stood by himself. One man with one great heart, like unto the heart of Jesus Christ, the heart of the Savior. And that one man stopped the entire Egyptian army with a wall of fire between him and them, with two million people behind him with no swords, with no ability to fight. And he saved them. They went through the water on dry land. And then came the, the Pharaoh and his army, and they were wiped out. This is one type of Jesus the Savior. So now in the second sermon, we want to consider another type. And that is the one who is the great-grandfather of every one of us in the world today. There are 7 billion people alive in the year 2020. All 7 billion of us, we have hands, we have hearts. We are alive because of one man who saved all of us, and his name is Noah. Noah is also a type of Jesus Christ in his most sacred heart. 
And he shows us a different part of the heart of Jesus. He shows us a different part of what it means to be Savior. Savior means so many things. And Noah is the first one who will be called the Savior. And what did Noah do? Noah lived in a world that was most wicked, like our world. You know what our Lord Jesus Christ said 2,000 years ago? He said, when I come back, when I return to the second coming, it will be like in the days of Noah. Where do you want to be in those days? We are now like in the days of Noah, where the whole world is filled with sin, and the whole world is filled with lies, and the whole world is filled with every kind of wickedness. What do we need today? We need Noah. And what did God do? God looked down upon the earth 1,560, 56 years after he created it. He looked down upon the earth and he saw that it was filled with sin. And he said, I will wipe out mankind. And God said, I have repented myself. I, God, am sorry that I made man. Because man is so terrible and so wicked. And therefore God in his anger visited the earth. And he went around the earth and there he found Noah. And he stopped. And he said, Noah has found grace with God. In this most wicked world, there is Noah. Noah has pure heart. In a world that is totally impure. Noah has a perfect faith in a world that does not believe in anything and is so very proud. And Noah is quiet in a world filled with so much noise. You know, they had radios, they had batteries, they had electricity. They had much modern technology before the flood. There was noise everywhere, but Noah was quiet. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was filled with knowledge of God. Noah was filled with love of God. And Noah worked. And then God said, maybe I won't kill all mankind. Maybe I'll give man a second chance. Maybe I will give man a second chance. Why? Because of this man Noah. How hard he works. How much he loves and how he is not affected by the wicked world around him. You know that we are now in the new times of Noah. We need to have the heart of Noah inside of us. We must have the heart of Noah inside of us. A heart that knows and loves and serves God. Not a heart that is disturbed by the modern world, that is taken in by the modern sins, but a heart that knows, loves, and serves God. And God came down to Noah and he said, Noah, I want you to build me an ark. I want you to build me a boat right here in your own home. You live many, 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 many miles, many kilometers away from the sea. But I want you to build me a boat. It will be a large boat. I want it big enough to hold all the living creatures on the earth. I want it to be the boat that is going to be used to save the human race. Build it. Noah was a carpenter. Noah was a, build, a, boat, a builder of boats. And Noah built a boat. It took him 100 years to build that boat. He patiently constructed the boat. You know that one thing that a Savior is, the word Jesus means Savior. But what is a Savior? The Savior is a carpenter. The Savior is a boat builder. How, what is the point in trying to save people if only you die for their sins? You must build a boat. You must build a church. You must build a kingdom in which people can live so that you can take souls across the world safely. And that requires a meticulous, hardworking, dedicated man of faith. And this is Noah. Noah spent 100 years. Now he had many sons. 
many, many, many sons. But he did not use all his sons to build the ark. He chose only three good ones. Three also that know, love, and serve God. And one was Seb, the other was Ham, and the other was Japheth. He said, you three boys, it is enough with you three boys to help me build this ark. And for 100 years they built it. And they put pitch on the outside to protect the ark from the waves and water on the outside. And they put pitch on the inside in case the water got inside, in case there was something wicked on the inside that must also be protected from. And he protected the boat on the outside. He protected the boat on the inside. And he spent 100 years building that boat. What was in the heart of Noah? Noah had a great love of God. But he knew that God must be in all things. God is not only in my heart. God is not only in my mind. God is in every creature. And therefore he made a boat that would hold all the animals. Seven of each kind of bird. Two of each kind of animal. And not only are we alive today, but cats are alive today. Dogs are alive today. Elephants are alive today. Polar bears are alive today. Only because of Noah. All of us owe our very physical lives to the Savior. You know that Jesus Christ, He didn't just save your soul. He doesn't just save my soul. He doesn't just love your soul. He doesn't just love my soul. He loves our bodies. He loves all of the animals. He loves the trees. He loves the fishes. He loves the birds. And He wants all to be saved. And you know that in the last 2,000 years, St. Francis, he spoke to the fishes. He preached, rather, to the birds. St. Anthony preached to the fishes. But Noah spoke to all of the animals. He commanded them to come, and they came from all over the world, and they came on top of, into his boat. And every single animal that lives today, all the animals down in the Philippines, their great-grandfathers, they were all located at, at, at a present-day Turkey. They were all at Mount Ararat. The Tarsier's great-grandpa was at Mount Ararat. And so were all the monkeys. And so were all the animals of this world. They were all raised at Mount Ararat. There was a Tarsier on the side of the ark. There was an elephant inside of the ark. And how did they react to Noah? They could feel the gentleness of his heart. The Savior is not only a warrior that destroys the enemies of God, who also has an exceedingly gentle heart that loves the smallest animals. He let the mice on the ark, even a couple of rats he let on the ark, and the gerbils, and all the different small creatures. He let them all upon the ark. He gave them each a place. And Noah walked around that ark for over one year when the flood happened. And Noah fed, and Noah fed. And Noah fed. And here Noah was like St. Peter. Because you know that what did our Lord Jesus Christ tell Peter? Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yea, Lord, you know that I love you, said Simon, the son of John, St. Peter. Feed my lambs. He told the Pope, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. If Noah did not bring grain, if Noah did not bring food to the sheep, there would be no sheep alive today. If Noah did not bring enough food on the ark to feed his three children, Sim, Ham, and Japheth, and to feed their wives, there would be no one of us alive today. The very hands of Noah fed the animals. The hands of Noah fed all these creatures. And do you know that our Lord Jesus Christ right now, he is God. God made man. And he right now feeds the lilies of the field. He feeds all the animals. He feeds the deer. He takes care of all of them with his loving care, which is called divine providence. The Savior is working right now, feeding every single man, woman, and child on earth, feeding all of the animals, feeding the very plants that also need food. He is making sure that all are fed. And this love of the green and the plants, 
and the love of the animals, and the love of every living thing was inside the heart of Noah. And this is noted in the heart of Jesus Christ. For when he walked the earth, what happened? Little children came to him. Little children ran to him because they could see in him the great love. The love of a father, the love of a savior, the love that was in the heart of Noah. And he was working, he was building. He was making up for the sin of Adam because Adam was supposed to take care of the garden. Instead, Adam forgot about the garden. But Noah never forgot. Noah took care of his boat. Noah provisioned it very well. Noah made sure there was enough food for every kind of animal. Noah fed them all. Noah made sure there was a place. And then he prayed inside. Now consider the great flood. There's two places to be during the great flood. One is outside the boat, where Noah is not. The other is inside the boat, where Noah is. Whoever is outside the boat, screaming, yelling, cursing, despairing, and dying, we don't want to be outside that boat. This is the boat of our Holy Mother, the Church. The whole of the boat of our Holy Catholic Church. We want to be inside that boat with Noah. Now what about those that were inside the boat? They could hear screaming outside. They could hear the water is coming down in great torrents. They knew that other boats were sinking all over the world. Thousands and thousands of boats sinking in the great flood. But this boat was the boat of Noah. And Noah sat calmly. And Noah did his daily work during the flood. And Noah prayed during the flood. And whoever was with Noah was safe. And whoever was with Noah needed not to fear. This was, remember, also about the Savior. This was a great mistake of the apostles on Holy Thursday night. The apostles were afraid. Because soldiers came to capture Jesus Christ, and the apostles thought that they also were in danger. And therefore the apostles ran away in fear. But the apostles did not need to fear, because Noah was in the heart of Jesus Christ. And whoever was with him would not be harmed. The Blessed Virgin Mary stood at the foot of the cross, and she was not harmed. St. John stood at the foot of the cross, and he was not harmed. And Veronica wiped the face of Jesus, which you could not do. That was forbidden, but she was not harmed. And Simon carried the cross behind our Lord, and he was not harmed. And the apostles stood in the crowd, and they were not harmed, because the heart of Noah was in Jesus Christ. And he will not allow anyone who is inside his ark, anyone that has the knowledge and love of him, inside the ark, they will not be harmed, they will not starve, they will always be fed, and by the very hands of Noah himself, this is the heart of the Savior. So Noah is one part also of what it means to be a Savior. And our Lord Jesus Christ is Savior like Noah, who got us through the flood, and he is Savior like Moses, who saved us from the land of Egypt, He's Savior also like Joseph, Savior like Joshua. And every way it shows a different part of the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us love the heart of Jesus and ask that his heart, of he who is the Savior, enter inside of us. So the Savior can stay inside of us and never depart from us. Know and love the Savior. We must have the heart of Noah in these times in 2020. We must have the heart of Noah. This is the heart that is required to survive in these most wicked times. And then when the chastisement of God comes, the whole world shall catch on fire. The whole world shall be destroyed. But we who have the heart of Noah and stay next to him, we shall be safe. We shall be protected. Stay close to Noah and have the heart of Noah inside of you. to understand a little bit about what it means to be the name of Jesus. In the name of the Savior. I pray that God bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.